TCI is brought to you by Spendthrift Stallion Line of David, the number one second crop sire in North America and sire of leading Kentucky Derby contender Firing Line. Welcome back to TCI, your inside track to the Triple Crown. Alongside Joel Cunningham, I'm John Siegel. Joel, we have a lot to talk about, so let's jump right in. Let's recap the last of the 50-point series. Let's start off at, at Turfway Park, and let's talk about Royal Sun and Dubai Sky, two Colts that I know you were pretty high on going into the race. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, let's go straight to the race replay, and we'll watch the stretch run here, John. You'll see Royal Sun in the white silks, easy to identify. He was on the pace like we thought, looked good pre-race, so did Dubai Sky, and I was really impressed. With Dubai Sky, you see him separating himself here. The ability to break from the far outside, make a middle move, impress a pretty honest pace, in my opinion, as wide as he was, and still separate in the stretch. Finish all alone. You had to be impressed by the performance. I don't think it was the fastest pace. I mean, Meta Boss didn't really get a slingshot type pace yeah. to kick it in in terms of the quality closers in here. But a very good performance, I felt like, from Dubai Sky, first time synthetic, and more importantly, a mile and eighth. You know, to me, when he was winning a Gulfstream, I think he was winning just on class and quality. He looked like a colt that wanted to go much further than a mile. So the classic distance, well within his realm, in my, in my opinion. And we look at this colt, you know, obviously the candy rides, we know from the California synthetic days, they, they obviously yeah. love that surface. But the Churchill surface, the big wide turns, I know they've run him on the dirt before. He didn't necessarily like it at the time, but the Churchill dirt can be friendly to horses that like the synthetic and the turf if you're a quality colt. So he's a horse that just is progressive, keeps getting better. Do I think right now he warrants being among the best colts in this group? No, because I do think it's a deep crop. There's some accomplished dirt horse in here. But, you know, coming back now in six weeks or whatever into the Derby, do I think he's a horse that could excel at a mile and a quarter and hit the board in the Derby, like maybe a Patio Prado and some of these other turf synthetic right. horses? I would say yes to that. So he's an interesting colt. And Three Chimneys is in the business of making stallions. They triple crown nominated him. And ladies and gentlemen, he got in with the 50-point race there. You will see him in the starting gate in the Derby if he's healthy. All right, let's move to the Sunland Derby now, and let's talk about firing line. This is a horse that was on the TCI Top 10 going into the weekend. Joel, we thought he was the class of this race. I mean, let's be honest, it was not the strongest group. What I liked about what this colt did is the way that he just – excelled when, when when Gary Stevens asked him to go. No whip. I mean, this colt just really was impressive, I thought. It was the performance of the weekend for sure, but it was one that we expected to see. I mean, we talked about it last week. He was a grade one colt running a grade three race. And once Lord Nelson scratched out, a horse that I think Baffert realizes is a one-turn horse, and you may see more in like the Pat Day mile on the Derby weekend car, right. not really the Kentucky Derby. Um, you know, really, there was no other competition. And getting that class relief from Dortmund, firing line, I think it's just what he needed in here. And you see, he's already assumed the lead going into the stretch here under Gary Stevens very confidently. But they made him run honestly early. I mean, to set a track record like he did, you have to set some pretty good fractions. You can't run the for opening half mile slow and then finish and expect to have a track record time. So he ran a pretty honest race, in my opinion. He goes 47 and change, just a hand ride here. Doesn't pull the whip out on him. The buyer's speed figure, again, was a little light considering he won by 14 and a quarter and set a track record of 147 and one. It gets a 97 buyer speed figure. Better than Dubai Sky's 92 buyer speed figure. It's the prep he needed. Look at him stride out here. I mean, to me, he, this was the prep he needed. Maybe a confidence builder for a colt that, you know, had not shown that killer instinct in his previous two races. Be interested to see now, training up to the Kentucky Derby. I like the talent. However, the fact that he hasn't won a dogfight yet, I think is interesting for him to now have to go into a field of 20 in front of 150,000 people and face the type of competition he's going to have to face again. All right, so he was number seven going into the weekend. Joel, off of that performance, surely you moved him up the TCI Top 10. Well, let's go now. The, the TCI Top 10 brought to you by DRF Bets, and you'll see no change here on the board. Um, we have our Top 10 firmly in place. And what's interesting to me when you're talking about firing line is I have him at seven. You know, he cemented his spot there. But I have him as the fourth California Colt on my list, obviously Dortmund being number one. American Pharaoh, if you want to consider him California. I'm talking about the horses that I've raced there. And then Santa Anita Derby contenders, Bolo and Prospect Park, just because I like their upside more. I think those Colts, you know, again, horses that maybe are more tailor-made for the Kentucky Derby uh, type trip. So right now, firing line is impressive as he was. He's number four amongst the California Colts in my group. But again, this is a deep group, John. I mean, I think one to 10, 
There's plenty of talent in our top 10, and I do right. think that this group all has legitimate upside and real derby quality going into the first Saturday in May. All right, well, I see number 9 and number 10 down here on the TCI top 10. It's a perfect transition to talk about the first of the 100-point series. I mean, it's starting to get serious now. Yep. This is the, the final derby preps here. Let's talk about the Florida Derby first, and let's talk about our, our number 9 our number 10 horses both in here. Upstart. This is the horse that I think will be the favorite going into here. Tell me, what do you think of his chances? You know, I think maybe, even though he finished first last time, everybody remembers that Fountain of Youth where he was disqualified. You know, to me, he won that race by default, John. And you could maybe say that he even bounced a little in that performance. As big as he ran first out this year in the Holy Bull, maybe he regressed just a little bit last time out. So if he can regain that form, you have to like Upstart in this race. And there's other talent in here. But if you have the bounce theory, I think upstart, this is his race to lose. Now, his biggest thing is he breaks from the far outside. There's a short run to the first turn at a mile and eighth race at Gulfstream right. Park. So he's going to have to find an early position. That could lose him the race early if he does not. But he is tactical enough. We learned that in the, in the Holy Bull when he was very tactical from an outside post position. So I expect upstart to bounce back in here. And I need to see that from him. Materiality, another colt with a ton of talent from the top Pletcher Barn. My question with him is he has two lifetime starts. He ran a 104 buyer last time out, and he's coming back in 22 days off a life, lifetime top. That's usually not a good pattern right. for that barn. Ty Pletcher, very deliberately, likes spacing four, five, six weeks. He's coming back in 22 days, essentially three weeks. So materiality is going to have to step up, not bounce from that performance, but pair it to be able to be effective in here to beat upstart, in my opinion. All right, let's talk about the Louisiana Derby now. And Joel, this is from your home state. You know, they've tried to make this race a grade one. They want it to be a million dollars. They weren't able to do that. Still 750 and it's still a grade two, but there are some good horses in here. You know, Mr. Z, I've always said, I like Mr. Z. He's just one of those hard knocking horses that just is waiting for that breakthrough performance. I know there's some other competition in here you like, but do you think he's got a shot? Well, that's the disappointing thing about the Louisiana Derby is that, you know, they've tried to make it a grade one because it's the prep Churchill wants you to be in for that because they own the track for the Kentucky Derby. So they moved the purse to a million. Now it's back to 750. They couldn't get grade one status. So if you're not a grade one final prep, you're not going to get the best horses. So you don't see any horses from the TCI top 10 running in the Louisiana Derby. And even in the Florida Derby, you only saw our number nine and number 10 horse, yeah. two talented Colts. But that just shows you our top eight horses are still to come in the next few weeks. So it should be fun. But what you talked about, Mr. Z, John, horse that's getting blinkers off. He was a, he's a horse that, you know, has been a little keen early, and he's been game as the day is long. Yep. He just hasn't shown that ability to be able to, to finish in front of other Colts. Now, I think the thought is, well, maybe if we take the blinkers off, he'll settle a little better early. Maybe that'll give him a little more juice late to maybe finish on top. I do like him from a class perspective, but... I don't think the further he goes is going to be better for Mr. Z. I think he's more of a middle distance type horse. And same with Stanford, another middle distance type that has some speed, breaking from the rail. He's going to have to show speed for Ty Pletcher. I think St. Joe Bay is obviously a pace horse. So I see plenty of pace in this field of nine in Louisiana Derby. And down that long stretch, I expect it to be a very tactical race. And to me, little separates War Story, Keen Ice, and International Star. I mean, go back and look at the top three finishers in the Risen Star. Keen Ice should move forward third off uh, into his form cycle. Yeah. Curlin, you know, out of an awesome again mare. To me, he's going to love the extra 16th of mile more than anybody. International Star is obviously bred and handling. Has done nothing wrong. Just hasn't run that fast yet. And has got a better trip than War Story, particularly last time out. And War Story, Tom Amos' horse, really thinks the light bulb turned on with this colt. I mean, certainly you look at his four races and every one of them, he's had gate problems. So he's done a lot of gate work with him. If he is able to break and put himself in a better tactical position, I think if he trips out, he can easily win this race too. So I'm really interested to see War Story, Keen Ice, and International Star, because I think when they come to the wire in this race, they're going to be very hard to separate. All right, UAE Derby. You've never been a big fan of it for a derby prep. It's back on dirt now. Do you see any horses in here that could be a, a major factor in this year's Kentucky Derby? Well, you just mentioned it. They're not running the Tapita anymore, but interesting enough, I have Tosa New York. I wouldn't have given him a shot at all in the Derby last year, and he proved in the Breeders' Cup that he was okay on the dirt. Yeah. However, now that it's back to the dirt, you know, you see a lot of turf pedigrees in here, John. So going into the race, I'm going to be watching my Johnny B. Good, a horse that was not up to par with the top Colts here in America. But he has some speed, and usually speed, the American speed, can have an impact on these races. So I'm going to be interested to see how he runs in there and sort of gauge the race from there in terms of who the winner will be, sort of, sort of gauge it from a, a post perspective, and then also sort of look at the other races and how they play. How's that dirt track going to play? You know, in the mile, in the sprint, in the Dubai World Cup. 
assess the performances from the American horses we know and then try to make a judgment, you know, if a horse were to win this race and come over. That's the only thing you can really judge out of this race, but history shows that it has not been an impactful race for the Derby. All right, well, thank you, Joel, and thank you guys for watching. Make sure you come back next week. We'll recap these races, and we have to talk about the Santa Anita Derby, the Bluegrass Stakes, and we also have the Wood Memorial. Thank <laughs> you.